Hello everyone. My name is Fahad Said from School of Computing at Florida International University. And I will be presenting some of the high performance computing techniques that we have been developing for big data mass spectrometry based proteomics and fMRI based connectomics. Let me start by thanking the organizing committee uh, for GPUs for Science for inviting me here today. And it is a pleasure to be here. So our long-term goal is to come up with machine learning based techniques that are scalable for precision medicine. So in order to do this, uh, we use multiple modalities from different omic data sets that come from different kind of ex system biology experiments. And then, then we develop uh, uh, these machine learning algorithms that allows us to make sense of these data sets. Uh, and then we go on and develop high performance computing algorithms that makes this process more scalable. Right? So we have been working uh, for mainly proteomic data sets and fMRI based connectomic data sets towards this end. So today I will be presenting mostly about high performance algorithms that we have been developing for uh, proteomics, that is mass spectrometry based proteomics and uh, and some of the details about the fMRI based connectomics. Uh, and I will be happy to connect uh, offline if needed. So this is a very high level uh, overview of mass spectrometry. Um, and I will go in a very small detail of how the data from mass spectrometry is produced. So assume that these are the proteins that, are, that we will try to study. The first step is that this goes into the ionization stage where all of these specific amino acids in the proteins are charged at a very high, uh, are charged in a, in a ionization chamber. And then uh, after this, the ionization chamber, uh, the specific uh, peptides go into the isolation chamber depending on their mass. And once they are in the isolation chamber, they go into the fragmentation part where these specific uh, small molecules, peptides, are then bombarded using fr different fragmentation methodologies. Right? What this does is that this breaks up the peptide into very, very, very small pieces such that those small pieces can then be uh, analyzed uh, uh, using their mass, using their mass to charge ratio. Right. So the first ionization part here gives us MS1 spectra and the mass analysis or the final data that we get is known as MS2 spectra. Okay. So the result from data science perspective is that we get these um, millions of millions of these MS2 uh, spectra that look like this, uh, where here the X axis is the mass to charge ratio and Y axis is the intensity. And each of the peaks here is representing the uh, abundance of that specific uh, fragment of the peptide in the mass spectrometer. So the question that uh, from the computational perspective, the question becomes that how do we take this specific mass uh, MS2 spectra and formulate the peptide or uh, rebuild the peptide that originally produced this mass spectrometer, uh, mass spectrometry spectra. So the reason that we consider uh, mass spectrometry based proteomics big data problem uh, is primarily because of two reasons. So first reason is that the mass spectrometers themselves, the instruments have been getting more and more efficient, right? And they have been getting efficient in a way that they are, they have been, they, uh, have been uh, able to have a throughput that is more than more than the Moore's law. There's another reason why we consider the uh, mass spectrometry based proteomics a big data problem, and it has to do with the kind of computational techniques that are needed to process the mass spectrometry data. Right? So here I will show a very high level schematic of why this is the case. So here we have. Uh, a typical mass spectrometer, mass spectrometers, right, uh, that have produced this uh, spectra, and these spectra can be anywhere from uh, gigabyte to terabyte level. Okay, and as we discussed, that database search algorithms uh, allow us to process this data uh, using databases, right? 
So the databases themselves, the protein databases that are used to, uh, and that are used as a reference um, to uh, deduce the peptides are rather small, right? So there can be hundreds of megabytes, right? And because of this, there are many people who might say that, well, this is not really a big data problem, right? Um, which would be true, but the problem, competition problem that we are trying to solve is not matching this spectra to this specific database. If you closely look at the computational problem, uh, computational techniques, especially the database search algorithms, you will see that it is not this database that is being used to do the matching. Rather, this database is then expanded into a much larger database that is known as the theoretical species specific database where the database is expanded uh, depending on the parameters that are being given to the search algorithm, right? So in this specific example, you will see that uh, here we have this data set and this has this sequence number one, right? And uh, we, uh, for this specific example, we assume that the phosphorylation is uh, being requested uh, in one of the parameters of the search engine, right? So when that happens, uh, what search engine does is that it takes this specific sequence and then goes on and do a combinatorial, uh, all the combinatorial possibilities that might be associated with that specific uh, sequence. So in this case, you have this uh, sequence and all of these sequences are then expanded where each of the sequence is different in one of the amino acid. So, so in the first case, uh, the phosphorylation is assumed with S in the second case, it is assumed with T. In the third, it is assumed with the second T. Uh, in the fourth, it is assumed with, with a Y and so on and so forth, right? And this is just one example. And this is just one uh, modification that is being requested from the search parameter. When you increase the number of uh, modifications uh, in the parameters for the search engines, the, common, uh, the expansion of this theoretical database is rather exponential. Um, uh, and usually people uh, do their uh, search engine um, uh, runs using two or three um, uh, post-translation modifications um, just because the results uh, do not get scalable with increasing size of uh, increasing number of parameters, right? But this is not the whole story. Once this specific uh, database is produced, the theoretical database is produced, it, it is then expanded into a theoretical spectra, right? And this theoretical spectra is the, the list against which this experimental spectra is matched, right? So really, uh, if you think about it, uh, it is not the database itself, but it is the theoretical spectra uh, that is produced from the database, uh, depending on the parameters that are being searched, uh, that is used for this, uh, uh, that is used for this uh, peptide detection. Now, the you will see that the theoretical database that is produced for matching uh, is up to a terabyte level or more, right? And we already have these billions of uh, spectra that are from gigabyte to terabyte level. So then the um, uh, uh, the way that the, the search engines operate is that they uh, assume a lot of filtering mechanisms uh, that allows the methods to be scalable, right? But it is widely known that those filtering mechanisms uh, lead to uh, dark data in proteomics, uh, which means that uh, it leads to a lot of data that might not be seen by these uh, search engines. Right? So in order to solve this problem, um, uh, we do not need the, uh, the, uh, the matching is not done for these small uh, protein databases, but rather with the large uh, theoretical spectra that is produced. And, 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 and it has to have a all-to-all -all matching between the spectra and these theoretical database, uh, which is the theoretical spectra in order to have a complete understanding and deduction of the peptides in, in an optimal manner. So this is what the schematic of the, uh, our GPU-based algorithm looks like. Uh, we do not have uh, 
uh, time to go into detail for all of that. Um, but here you will see that this spectra is transferred to the GPU side uh, where only the intensity arrays are transferred while maintaining the mass to charge ratio spacing of the, of, the, of the spectra. And then we had a specific sorting technique that allowed us to sort very large number of arrays uh, very quickly. Uh, and then we do a lot of uh, processing and I want to get to the detail of the uh, 3D spectra into uh, 1D spectra, uh, 1D array that we were able to do. And the idea was that we take this spectra and we have two specific arrays, intensity arrays and quality um, QIS arrays uh, that allows us to go on and process the data while the data is still in 1D array. So this 1D array is then processed, right? And um, instead of transferring all of the data back, uh, we just transfer the data that has been modified because of this reductive algorithm. And that saves a lo lot of bandwidth in, uh, uh, from going from GPU to CPU, right? So uh, once it goes back, once uh, this data goes back, the difference of um, difference between the spectra uh, that is processed and um, spectra that has changed, um, it goes back. So since we already know the spectra it started with, this can be used uh, to reconstruct the spectra uh, with the added changes. So this is uh, the uh, very high level schematic of how the um, GPU can be used for processing very large number of spectra uh, in, a, in, a, in an efficient manner. So then the performance that we got for the execution time that we got was also very uh, encouraging uh, for these uh, data sets. And we were able to get uh, speed ups that were uh, uh, somewhere between 100 and 400 times as compared to the naive approach that only gave us uh, speed ups that were two to four times uh, for these large mass spectrometry data sets. So most of the work here on uh, GPU-based uh, mass spectrometry processing was does, done by Mao uh, who is a who is one of the organizers of this C, uh, GPU for Science um, uh, series, um, and and all of the code is available uh, online for people to use freely, uh, and we will be happy to we will be happy to answer any questions or provide any uh, help that we can. So our ongoing efforts is towards developing uh, a few of the fundamental computational motifs that we can use for mass spectrometry based proteomics. And there are specific uh, problems that we are working on uh, related to load balancing, localized uh, data processing, and making sure that the uh, resources on these large supercomputers are used in an efficient manner. And we run all of our uh, code on exceed supercomputers, and I'm going to show you some of the results in the next slide. Processing that we have been doing, the basic idea is that we want to be able to process these MRI data sets in a very fast, but very, uh, in a very scalable, but in a very accurate manner. And we are able to do, the, and, and, the, and the data that you get from these MRI machines are rather large, right? So our, our, our uh, effort has been towards developing these machine learning models and also, uh, processing these machine learning models using GPUs. Um, um, and we have been able to uh, publish that uh, in a uh, frontiers of neuro, uh, neuroinformatics rather recently. Uh, and the, the reason that I wanted to show this slide is that GPU processing uh, or high performance computing for scientific um, uh, data sets can be very significant. So here you can see that using our GPU daemon method, which is a generalized method that can be used by different people who might not be very familiar with um, CPU, GPU architecture or algorithms, uh, just using the, that method, we were able to take our machine learning model and process that in less than 40 minutes as compared to other methods that might take seven hours. So a, a carefully designed high performance algorithm for GPU uh, can result in very scalable performances for many of these scientific data sets, uh, which, is, which is very um, useful, uh, especially for personalized and precision medicine. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, who have worked on these uh, uh, projects over the years. Uh, uh, of course, without my students, this would not, any of this would not have been possible. Uh, 
for the work that I presented today, Mao Zovan, who is now uh, uh, who is now at Nurse uh, UC Berkeley, uh, was uh, the major uh, contributor towards these GPU-based algorithms. Uh, we had Taban Aslami, um, and she graduated uh, this semester, and she has been working on these big data uh, problems in uh, for connectomics. And Muhammad Hasib is my current PhD student who is working on many of these algorithms, distributed memory algorithms for large scale uh, proteomics. And these are some of the funding acknowledgements from NSF and National Institutes of Health. And we are uh, very uh, thankful to, for, uh, to these funding, funding agencies. And that's, what, and that's it for uh, now. Thank you so much for listening to me. All of my uh, web information and my Twitter information is on the slide. Uh, please get in touch with me and I will be very, very happy to hear from you.